Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. Going to be a powerful video. I'm going to really talk to those that are unsaved as well as to those that are saved and where it says judge, you know, whether, when, how to judge somebody, when to judge somebody, how to do it with discernment. So we'll cover those two topics. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. This is very important if you're not saved. I really want you to tune in. So one of the things that you'll hear if you are a saved Christian Judge, judge not, lest you be judged. And, and they get that from Matthew 7. So Matthew 7 was, judge not, that you be not judged. Verse 2 of Matthew 7, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you, you met, it shall be measured to you again. So again, following with Romans chapter 2, Paul's speaking to the Jews and asking them not to judge. And because they are not righteous, there are none righteous, the Bible says. And so because you're, there's none righteous, we are in need of a Savior. You know, we uh, fall short of the glory of God, and so we can't be with God unless we are forgiven for our sins. And Jesus Christ died on a cross, and he, he suffered immensely the wrath of God. He was a propitiation for us, is what, it, what, what happened. And his blood is, if you believe your heart, and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Messiah and he died for you on a cross and you believe in that for your salvation, you are saved. If not, you'll go to a hellfire and it's eternal. It's totally eternal. And um, we're going to cover that at the end of this video. Right now, we're going to start with how to judge righteous if you are, you know, if you're already saved. Um, you know, how to do that correctly. Go to 2 Corinthians and follow along in your Bible. Chapter 10, and we'll go verse, verse 12, if I can find it here. All right. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. The Bible reads... For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that com commend themselves. So these are the people that believe that, the, you know, if you've ever been to a church and feel uncomfortable because someone feels like they're better than you, that's, that's this crowd. But they measuring themselves by themselves, which is, you know, they're trying to compare you to them and, and make themselves feel better and more righteous and they're boastful in the fact that they, they don't send as much as you. This is completely the wrong thing to do as a Christian and comparing themselves among themselves and not and not wise but we will not boast of of things without our measure but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us and measure to reach even unto you the the most beautiful thing about God is he's always going to judge righteously and so it's important for a Christian to remember that that through our lenses and it's easy to try to compare someone to ourselves and that's not righteousness the only way to look at a situation a thing that happens an event that happens is it right or wrong is to look at it through the lens of the lord is it is go to the scriptures is it correct then if it isn't yes you can call that out but discernment must be used to judge right and wrong through jesus christ and again, it's just the most uh, non-racist thing ever. God has these rules, and he is God. He has a right to, to give them out, and we follow them or not, and the things that we do can be judged. But only through Jesus Christ and God's eyes in the scriptures, not of our own comparisons or thoughts on it. All right, let's go to John, and we'll go to 7... 7, chapter 7, verse 24. Uh, actually, let's jump at John 7, 24. It just says to judge right, rightless, right, you know, just judge rightlessly, which is only through Jesus Christ. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians um, 5, 21. Uh, 521, the Bible reads, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So 2 Timothy 1.13 uh, as another verse. This is the proof text for comparing all corrupt things. Uh, 
you know, with the Bible, with the Word of God. Not, not of course, like I said, using your own thought on it. So you, you can hold fast to the Scriptures in that regard, and you can prove all things with it. 1 Corinthians 10, and we'll go verse 15. 1 Corinthians 10, 15. The Bible reads here, I speak as to wise men, judge you what I say. So if you're wise, you in using the word of God, you can judge. You can you but here here what's interesting is Paul is actually commanding that he be judged in his words. So this is an apostle himself saying, Judge me. I speak as to wise men, judge you what I say. So judge me. You know, make sure it's correct. And you should do that with all brothers and sisters. No one's perfect. And so people can make mistakes, and you should read the Word of God to, you know, to judge them. 1 Corinthians eleven thirteen. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? All right, so we're not, that's, you know, judge in yourselves. So judge. Eleven thirty one. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So are you judging inwardly at yourself? Are you looking at your own actions and letting yourself be chastened by the Lord? I mean, that's also very important to judge yourself and where you are realistically. Don't, you know, don't judge according to the flesh. Just judge yourself compared to Jesus in the Word. Get in the Word of God. It's extremely important to have understanding. Let's go to Colossians. Um... Colossians 2.16, real quick. And the Bible reads in Colossians 2.16, 16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of any holy day, or of the new moon, or the Sabbath day. So we're not, to, as a Christian, to uphold these. This is a, a great set of verses to use for someone who wants to think that you should be under the law. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So when they say a shadow of things to come, it's during the millennial return, the millennial, millennial reign of Christ, these things will be set up. And, and that is something that, you know, will, will be in play at that point in time, but not today. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. And we'll go verse 15. And the Bible reads, but ye, but he, excuse me, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. So again, you're not judged by you know flesh and comparing yourself to another man, rather the word of God, but but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, all actions, all you know, again, people's actions will speak loudly of of who they are in the heart. And look at all things. And spiritually you can judge it through the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And go verses 1 and 2. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, so this is a, certainly a group of Christians, like a church body, go to, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. So why would you take your matter you know, with unjust people? Uh, verse 2. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if... The world shall be judged by you, you being a saint, a living Christian, as a saint. Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? So somebody wrongly does something, say, in a, in a church body, a group of Christians, that you know, they certainly can examine a couple Christians, two, three Christians can examine that, what happened between the two, the two people in the church, and make a, and make a determination based on, based on a just law and based on Christian doctrine. And it says here, we'll judge the world. We will judge the fallen angels when at the great white throne judgment, which is where, if you're not saved, you will be judged for the, what you do um, for those that are living in this period of time. And, um, you know, God trusts our judgment. And, and that's why we're able to judge things. It says things and matters. So disputes between people, people that may have wronged someone else, can certainly be judged. John 3... 36, not going to turn there, but belief in the Son, you have life. 
uh, without that life, eternal life, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ for your salvation, what happens? The wrath of God for those who will be on those who do not live. And now we're going to go into the lost, and we're going to transition our conversation. Let's go to Ephesians 5, 6. Ephesians 5, chapter 6, and I didn't for some reason mark this, so I apologize. So let me find it real quick, and we will continue right along. So Ephesians 5, 6, it basically says, no man, let no man deceive you by vain words. Uh, we can go to Colossians, or no, here's Ephesians 5, 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience are those that are lost. And I get really upset. You can find verses similar to this at Colossians 3, 6 as well. And, and so people that are lost, they're really, you just have a sinful condition. I'm no better than you, okay? I don't deserve salvation. Anybody that's saved doesn't deserve salvation. We just, it's a free gift. We receive it. By our belief in this in this day and age for our salvation through Jesus Christ and what he did on that cross but you have a sinful condition when you don't you don't believe and it's really it's really bad how preachers these days and people that know the, the gospel will say they'll sugarcoat their condition um, they'll make it seem like it's not so bad um, you know, in, in, in Luke 16, the rich man could look across the gulf from hell to paradise and see, um, could look across and see them and, and, and vice versa. And he was burning in hell. He was, you know, a lot of people will try to make people feel comfortable in the fact that they're in their state of going to hell. But that really angers me. It's really horrible. Let's go to Psalms chapter five, verses um Four through six. Let's see what God thinks of those uh, that aren't saved. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. So he hates wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. So he can't dwell with God. Verse five, the evil can, evilness can't dwell with God. Psalms 5, 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. That be sin. It's a no-go. He hates all that sin. Hates. Doesn't say he, and the people that say God loves you, God loves you to those that aren't saved, you're not doing in them any good at all. You can see here Psalms 5.5, 5, God hates the workers, all workers of iniquity. Verse 6, thou shalt destroy them that speaketh, leasing the Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. So destroy, you see the word abhor, which is, you know, he hates the iniquity and the work in those that are lost. You should never say God loves you when, to a lost person. God, really, it shows the opposite. So when you're lost, if you don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, when you die, when you're, you take your last breath, you're going to find yourself immediately in darkness and in hellfire. And then you'll, you will come out. For a period of time at the end of the at the end of the thousand year period of time after the tribulation uh if you die you might go through the tribulation which is horrible if you don't die before that and that's a horrible mess if you look at revelation there'll be famines and earthquakes and and asteroids hitting the earth and wars like world war three there will be waters turning to blood there will be a third of the trees burning and 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 it will be a bad place but you'll go to the great white throne judgment seat and you'll be told and you'll know the sins you did against God before you go back to the lake of fire to burn eternal. Accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. By the blood, can you be forgiven all sins wiped away so you can live eternal with the true God who loves you enough to die for you and he created you. God bless. Have a great day. And the most important decision is to get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ.